gone, we can't catch him. It's now to fight for number one, or in this case for number two as they go. Look at that, Elvis Rankin up the inside. He wants that before that Skip Barber racing school seat, and he is going to do everything he can to get there as well. Here we go. Down no name straight, but he's just defended well, but Rankin gets through, nips by. want a seat in the Skip Barber Formula iRacing series, you have to be one of the 20 best. If you want to be top three in this series, it will guarantee you an opportunity to race in the Skip Barber Racing Series. You have to, though, go through the brand new circuit of the Americana. We've got ourselves brilliant action. We've got ourselves amazing showcases of two races tonight. And it's Circuit of the Americas that brings it through. I'm Jake Sperry. That's Chaz Draycott, who's alongside me for the ride. And Chaz, we come here at the midway point of the season, knowing that there are two juggernauts in this series, both who have different paths to get to the top. The first is Diogo Pinto, who was at the double. And then, of course, you've got the young superstar, of course, that is Sebastian Weldon. Those two are the big highlights to keep an eye out on here tonight. Yeah, they absolutely are, Jake. And what a fantastic place to go racing this evening, Circuit of the Americas. As you rightly say as well, we're going into the second half of the season. Technically, race one is in the first half of the season and race two is the second half of the evening. Five race meetings this season, two races at each. And this is going to be probably one of the best race meetings we're going to have. It's such a difficult circuit, but there's a lot of amazing prizes on offer, which is really going to ramp up the heat for our drivers tonight. Absolutely. There are 10 races in this season. They are all worth the same. There's no major race here. But what you can say is that there are prizes that you absolutely wish you could have. For example, a full season, the 2023 Skip Barber Formula Race Series worth half a million dollars. Each driver, though, knows that each race is important. A thousand dollars worth of credit to the Skip Barber Racing School for each win. And the hard charge of the driver who gains the most places throughout each race, each individual race, will get themselves a very, very nice prize as well. But this is how the championship looks. Now, note, there are two drop rounds. We haven't put them in just yet. And anybody who doesn't have a number next to their name is not here today racing. But what is crucial is that gap. 16 points for Diogo Pinto. He's at the top here, Chaz. And he is certainly looking like he is in buoyant form. Absolutely. You know, the, the race craft that we saw from him at Road Atlanta last time out was just immaculate. And unfortunately for Matt Caruana, it was him on the receiving end of some brilliant moves on both occasions at the same corner, the last lap, and Diogo did one in each race on either side of him. It was a real, real schooling, it must be said, by Diogo. But that's nothing to take away from how good Matt Caruana was, though. He really showed how good his pace can be and his racecraft as well. And racecraft is going to be the name of the game here tonight, isn't it, Jake? There's so many different technical elements to this circuit at Circuit of the Americas. They really have to have their wits about them. They do, especially up that massive climb to turn one, the Big Red, as it is known here in Austin, Texas. And you've got that fantastic first sector, very similar to Silverstone over in the United Kingdom. But when you get up to turn 11 and then along to turn 12, that's where the prime overtaking place is today, heading into that arena section around the observatory tower through 16, 17, and 18, the triple right, very similar to the Istanbul City Park circuit. And then, of course, those final two corners, transferring style corners, the short run to the finish line. It's going to be a showcase. And here is the driver who qualified here, Chaz. Number one through the hot laps. You have to qualify through the hot lapping system here with the Skip Barber Racing School through time trialing. The top 20 drivers via their hot laps book their ticket each week. Michael Janney, the fastest of the lot, and number one, hasn't been the easiest this season. No, absolutely. We've seen a number of drivers that have had the number one on their machines so far, so far this season, uh, double so far, but they, you know, they've been the one that they have to sort of feel a bit of extra pressure by going into this race evening as the fastest from the week preceding it. And with Michael Janney at the top of it, he is definitely going to be feeling that pressure. Doesn't look like it at the moment, though. We've realized by now that he's always very straight faced, always looks really calm and collected, does Michael Janney. So it doesn't always look like anything's going to phase him in terms of his emotion on his face anyway. You can see he's just weaving slightly now to get the tyres up to temperature. Sebastian Weldon was second fastest this week. Harley Horton was third ahead of Simone Pessone 
and Matt Caruana. And everybody's positions, as we noted last week, Jake, they are basically the number on the car. It is, and that shows you who's maybe got the first indication of a form book here today. Those two races both will be 15 minutes long, and the results from race number one indicate how race number two is going to go about things today. So keep that in focus with in terms of how they race, because if you've managed to have a bad race in race one, you can still pull it back in race number two. Dropping it down, trying to get the last little bit of temperature possible out of that iRacing Formula IR04, and now through turn number 20. Let's gear it up then from a driver's eye view. This is a lap around the circuit of the Americas and Michael Janney's qualifying lap. For more information on how to start your iRacing career, you can log on to iRacing.com today. This is your exact view in sim as you look to go through. Slight correction of oversteer into turn one. You're always fighting as you plateau over the top of the hill. The grip falls away and now through turn two, you head to the S's section. And this is where under the Echo Park Bridge, you have to be really alert because you can see those yellow anti-cut curves jutting out through this section of road, Chaz. And it means you are on a nice edge dancing through this opening sector. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece of racing track, isn't it? You have to clip those apexes perfectly. You and I have both seen touring cars, GT cars, and definitely little formula cars like this sent absolutely skyward by those devastating curbs. What a fantastic run this looks like by Michael Janney so far, though. He's gone through the little kink at turn 10, down towards 11. It's very, very wide here, and the apex disappears off the side of your screen, so it's hard to always nail that. If you're on a single monitor, most of the drivers at this level will be running on triple, so they'll have that peripheral vision. And then the long run down towards turn 11, a pivotal point of the circuit tonight, though, Jake. Lots of slipstreaming going on down here. Yes, and you can sense the roller coaster section of a straight. Now it's leaned slightly to the right. It's all about picking the right moment to use your braking. And you can see coming up then, next on iRacing course, we'll have the Porsche Attack Hoyer Esports Super Cup from the brand new Circuit de Nevers Mangi Core. You can see that with us, of course, 1 p.m. Eastern, 6 o'clock GMT with us as well as NASCAR College Series, which is heading to Dover over on Tuesday, February the 21st. You can tune in with us live, twitch.tv forward slash iRacing for that through the triple right-hander though after traversing the arena section which has a thousand lives Janny right up heavy against the curb now looking at this next left important left turn 19 it's a transfer you don't want to push out too wide here because you'll lose time Jemma Schwab Lemonet currently the fastest driver of anybody at this moment a 2.063 is the time to beat oversteer through the final corner trying to get it all sorted Michael Janney 2.06397 is two tenths adrift and ends up in third position Harley Horton Currently the fastest driver over the course of that lap time. And looking towards the line, Matt Adams is going to be one of the last ones over the line. Crucially, someone who didn't get a time in is number two, Sebastian Weldon. As the checkered flag comes out, Adams unable to get a time. So the field will stack up as follows. It will be number three. Harley Horton, who has got the car on pole position, has done so by two tenths of a second ahead of Pajemishwab Lemonek in second position and Michael Janney, who we were on board with in third. It seems like the Polish drivers here today have found a circuit that they love because Jakub Maciejewski is in fourth with Diogo Pinto, the double winner last time out in fifth, and Josh Thompson, who's third in the championship in sixth position. Michael Romanidis and Johannes Trout making his first start of the season. They are seventh and eighth with Simone Pissoni ninth and Josh Poulain in tenth position. Matthew Zais and Matt Caruana share row six of the grid with Brandon Hawkin and Matt Busa in 13th and 14th. Jordan Johnson and Ross Banfield are on the eighth row and drivers who didn't set a time, Matt Adams and Sebastian Weldon, the 18 cars here today, looking to make sure that their race is going to be fantastic. And Chaz, we sit here getting ourselves ready for what is all important two races that they have here today. And if you're down at the back of the field like Sebastian Weldon is, and you've used both your drop rounds, this now needs to be an absolutely mega run today through 15 minutes. It absolutely does. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we've seen just how good Sebastian is. You know, he's definitely got that racing pedigree, but it's going to be a lot more work than we saw him do at Lime Rock, starting that far down the order. 18th place, the last car starting this evening. It is going to be very, very tough, but I have all faith in him. And to be honest, the level of talent we've seen from these drivers 
since this competition began again this season has been absolutely amazing. There is your race format, though. As you can see, we've got the fixed setup tonight as well. So all of the drivers, all of the equipment is all the same. It's down to the drivers themselves. And I love racing like that, Jake, because it means that no one's at a disadvantage. No, uh, no one can moan about the car. Everyone's got, got the same equipment and everyone has to just put every ounce of talent they've got in behind the wheel as they get rolling. They, abs they absolutely do. And that is going to be crucial. And you can join in for the Skip Barber Formula iRacing series. For more information on the schedule, how to become a member in the series, you can log on to skipbarber.com forward slash iRacing series today as we watch the pace car lead these 18 around the middle of this circuit through this brilliant switchback arena section where you can take many different lines to try and get that run through the inside line, the outside line. Both have their pros and cons and it's a very unique and clever way that this circuit works. For Harley Horton though, number three on pole position, you would say that he had a damage limitation style week. Did though, Chaz, very quickly get a penalty from race one last week. So race three of the championship, which demoted him all the way back to 10th place. Yeah, it's, it's going to be devastating to have a setback like that. But at the end of the day, it's how you bounce back from things like this in a championship that people are going to remember. And it gives you a fantastic platform to be able to make one of these amazing stories where you do come back from a setback like that. And that is, like I say, what people are going to look at. So hopefully we do see a good bounce back, but it's all down to the drivers now. And they line up two by two behind our wonderful pace car, which is going to dart off to the left-hand side in a moment. And the action is going to begin. I'm really excited for this one, Jake. Let's get the race underway, shall we? Horton, Lemonek, Jani, Maciejewski, Pinto, your top five as they exit turn 20, waiting for the green flag to drop and that massive crest up towards Big Red. 15 minutes then on the clock. They will wait for the start line. It's a very, very deliberate hold from Harley Horton. Green flag then in the air and watch as they all fan out, looking to try and find a bit of an angle. Everyone juts to the inside then, trying to cover off. They are swarming behind Harley Horton as they run through this corner, which is five, six cars wide and will just crescendo and tighten in as they reach themselves through. But it's a nice clean start as they all run through. Brilliant racing here for third position. That's Jak Maciejewski there trying to deal with Pajemeshwav Lemonek who's dropped back a little bit then off of uh, the works. Then Michael Jan and he's dropped to place off the start. But brilliantly, it is all clean through this opening section as they now look to run single file through the S's. Yeah, nice and tidy by Maciejewski to get right up behind Lemonek now. His countryman second and third. Harley Horton made a great getaway, but wasn't it amazing? He didn't catch anybody napping at all. The whole field jolted forward at the exact same time. It was a beautiful thing. It just shows you how good the reactions of these drivers are. But everybody survived in the first few corners, and already Sebastian Weldon moving up from 18th place to 14th. Now make that 12th in just a couple of corners. Oh, no, he's gone back down again. There's a spin. There's contact. Carolina. Whoa. Weldon is the one that's backwards, isn't it? No, it's Matt Caruana who's backwards and troubles then already on this opening lap. And turn 10 is so very uh, ideal for that sort of late lunge down to the inside. You can easily get yourself caught out. On the brakes they go then in towards this brilliant left-hand bend. And now you start gearing up this arena section. Horton covering off on that first section. Lemonek then in second. Maciejewski third and Michael Janney in fourth position then and it's all about staying in a range through this section of track you want to be out there and you want to be aggressive but we're going to have ourselves a little look at what just happened then over at turn number 10 out on circuit now this is sebastian weldon who's getting very eyes on think yes i can go down to the inside just oh. can't get it stopped though with matt caruana taking the corner and that is a little bit of youthful experience weldon the youngest driver in this field and you just felt that you've just got to be a little bit earlier on the brakes. Lap one, that section, as out of the final corner, Levenek takes the slow down penalty. Thank you very much. He'll lose a boat of position. Yeah, loads of drivers just coasting past him, and it's painful for Levenek. He can't do anything about it now. Basically, he's gone outside of track limits by enough that the sim has determined that he got an advantage from it, and he must slow down and give back time. And he drops all the way down to seventh position now. That awesome start that he made is completely undone but you're absolutely right jake a little bit of just overzealousness there from sebastian weldon unfortunately he saw the opportunity threw it down the inside but of course with a corner that wide and with that tight an apex so many cars and so many different lines there is always going to be contact down there with a move like that i'm afraid 
But now Sebastian has to pick himself up, dust himself off, and crack on with the race. It looks like Matthew Zies has stopped out on track, though. He's dropped down to the bottom of our timing tower. I wonder if we can find out what happened to him in a bit. But we see now Premslav Lemonek trying to catch back up with that train in front because these sorts of sections here are very, very tough to get right. And everybody can drive in a straight line here, Jake. So that's the easy bit. Yeah, he looked like he woke himself up a little bit there through the middle of those exit <laughs> sections. The wake up, Premslav. You've got yourself a race on your hands. Speak your race on your hands. Josh Thompson, Diogo Pinto. This is going to be an interesting race between those two drivers. Of course, it, when you get out of this series, they are teammates uh, in uh, terms of their sim racing careers. So for Diogo Pinto and Josh Thompson, who are first and third in the championship, they're going to be looking at, OK, well, what can we do in order to get ourselves the drives that we want? We want to stay with Michael Janney and Jakub Maciejewski, who find themselves in second and third positions at this moment and already that gap at the front out to a one second advantage for Harley Horton so it looks like he's got himself the opportunity to say I am back uh, in this one overall so we do have to note that Matthew Zace is in trouble and is out then of the race after the opening lap he is down in the pit so troubles then for Matthew Zace and we'll get a little look at exactly what happened to him a little bit later on but at least for the moment now it's about staying in range and uh, this is where Michael Janney is looking to use his experience which he would have learned from a driver that he is teammates with when he gets out of this series who just so happens to have been second position and won the Skip Barber Racing Series here Chaz in Elvis Rankin. Yeah absolutely Elvis showed him all how it was done last season didn't he and Michael Janney has been in the perfect place to learn from that. He's in the perfect place now to follow on with Masiewski in front of him. But the two of them losing a bit of ground to Harley Horton. There's a bit of a shimmy around in the background. A couple of places changing there. I think it was Lemonek overtaking Personi. And you don't normally see many overtakes through three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because it's a very, very fast sweeping section, really flowing. But we're going to have a look now and take a quick Ganders at replay and see exactly what happened here. So this, this is, is Johannes the... Trout, who yeah. finds himself going through the arena section and the back switches around and it's troubles then from that point onwards, thinking about trying to get that going again and lost a lot of time. The serpentine in the background then as we focus a little bit further forward on this race going for second position as here comes Michael Janney to the inside of Jakub Maciejewski, gets the nose alongside ahead by the time he hits the brakes. And Maciejewski is only a passenger at that point. He just has to sit and watch exactly what happens as it gets busy behind. This is the group of Simone Personi, and that's Jordan Johnson who's just gone through. Matt Boos is also looking for a way through, but look at this through the S's section. They're all starting to just tiptoe and trickle up over each other at this point. You get this sense that the moment you start battling in this series, Chaz, everybody else behind gets a free ticket to latch onto the back. And this is why we see so many times three car, four car, five car battles heading towards the end of races. Yeah, it's been brilliant to watch so far, hasn't it? Because you do see these little pairs and trios all sort of develop and build up. And then all of a sudden there's a battle in the middle of it and it splits up again. And then they all get a chance to sort of evolve and morph and then they come back together again. It's just magnetic racing. I absolutely love it. It's like a Lego set that never wants to be pulled apart. But Horton and Janney at the front at the moment, they're the two that are leading the charge. However, one of them's under pressure and one of them is not. Although Masiewski has Pinto going down the inside into turn one. Out of nowhere, Diogo Pinto picks his opportunity, makes the move, makes it stick and now gets back into a podium position and you can bet that his teammate outside of this series anyway Josh Thompson is going to try and follow him through but Masiewski has him having to be a little bit more patient here it's going to get a little bit of aero wake off the car in front through a section like that not a massive amount from these cars but still enough to upset your rhythm slightly and I mean we saw a moment ago with Trap how easily the car can go around just with that tiny bit of over rotation look at Pinto floating the back end bit round there as they come out of turn nine through the kink at 10 down towards 11 and you can see that these guys really are pushing right now just to try and get back up with Harley Horton. Absolutely they are dancing at this moment in time and for Michael Janney that gap at one and a half seconds at this point he would absolutely love to claw that back but the group now second position on back stretches 
I would say, to seventh because Prezhem Joab Lemonex got on the back of it with Josh Poulain. He's also trying to get back into this race at this stage. We're over halfway now through this opening race on the brakes. You can sense how Michael Janney is just having to be careful with the rear of this machine. You don't want to try and get through and uh, deal with too much. We're going to have a little look then at an overtake then uh, in just a second. Now, this is up into turn number one. This is how Diogo Pinto makes this move then. He senses there's an opportunity because it's so wide over at turn number one. It's very easy to fan straight to the inside, but with the unique nature of turn one, Chaz, the more that you go for the inside, the more you check yourself up in the middle of the corner. You're almost having to do the dirt oval slide job, essentially, to try and make the pass. Yeah, there's a number of corners on this circuit that are rather similar in that respect. You know, you've got turn one, turn 11, 12, 16, and 20, where there's such sharp corners that come back on themselves. If you do go for a move up the inside, you really compromise your own exit, and it's very easy for people to try and get a cutback. So it's important to park it on the apex but even in doing that, you are compromising your own run out of the corner as well. So there's certainly corners that require commitment. There was a lot of that there from Diogo Pinto. As we look a little bit back here, that's Personi down the inside of Johnson. Hawkins involved in this as well. The two yellow cars, they're both trying to go all the way around the outside. It's not working, so they slot back into position now. Flying formation through three, four, five, and six, and so on, etc. Great racing, though, but these guys have dropped off from the pack ahead now, so they're going to need something major to catch back up. But look at that. You called it a serpentine before, Jake, and it's absolutely spot on. It's like a living organism, isn't it, of cars with wheels? Simone Personi from Porto Dada in Italy, making Jano Trulli very proud with the way that he's defending <laughs> right now. He is very much the toughest character in this field to try and defend with. Johnson thought about the inside, moved to the outside, very nearly had Brandon Hawking to deal with. Look at this. They're two by two behind almost for a moment. And in the middle of this, get this, number two, Sebastian Weldon still there. Smoney Personi looking behind, thinking, oh, okay, what do I need to do here in this position? Well, it's just manage every driver behind. Here comes the look. Brandon Hawking now is going to try and make a lunge. He's going to get one. He might actually get both of them. They're three wide in towards that brilliant left-hander and just enough room given oh. there. Tony has to yield on the outside as through then will go Jordan Johnson to the inside of two of them and now they double back on each other. This is scintillating stuff. Absolutely incredible stuff up by Johnson to hang it around the outside, then have the inside to the next corner, but still Hawking manages to hold on. Johnson runs a little bit wide. Personi's going to tuck back in behind him now. And then Sebastian Weldon's watching this and thinking, go on then, boys, I want a piece of this as well. You continue fighting. And it was great to see Personi's tactic, though, with the slipstream. You could see that as Johnson pulled out to the left-hand side, uh, sorry, Hawking pulled out to the left-hand side, Pisoni moved over and gave him the slipstream to encourage the two of them to have a more equal battle going into the next corner, just in case he could get away with it. Hawking kicks the back end out. That's now going to compromise him. And look at Weldon tucked right up behind Pisoni as well. I can sense ascending coming. Jake, he's licking the stamp. Yeah, he, he doesn't wait very long, does Sebastian Weldon, to make moves. And he'll go up on the inside then with just a shade over four minutes to go. The battle for second up on the top of your screen. The battle for eighth underneath. And through then, turn two, goes the secondary pack. They're looking okay at the moment. Josh Thompson now looking behind him because he's got a battle of Josh's because Josh Poulain is there. And remember, he's got some very nice real-world experiences, Josh Poulain. He'll be using that experience of the Janetta to try and get himself an understanding. And Chaz, how important is the Janetta in terms of the understanding of how Josh Poulain's experience into open wheel goes? Just quickly, sorry, Jake, but uh, Sebastian Weldon ran wide there through that sort of sweeping right, left, right, left section. He got himself a slowdown. He's dropped back down to 15th place. But you're absolutely right. You know, the Ginetta, everyone would probably look at them and say they're completely different cars, what you're on about. But you're absolutely right, though, because they're low powered, really sort of floaty machines that you have to dance on the edge and really put on the limit to get most of the pace out of. You have to think about where you are in the race at the time, use the slipstream and get as much out of the car as you can. People often say that, you know, the fastest cars are the difficult ones to drive because your reactions have to be so top-notch to be able to handle it. I often say it's the slower cars that are, that are really, really difficult to drive because you've got so much pace that you can get out of it, but you have to extract that by driving the wheels off the thing. You know, you can't just be blessed with aerodynamics that can drag you around every corner perfectly, flat out everywhere. These cars require a lot more driver input and management and patience. And that's why the racing is so good, because everybody is on the limit of what they can do. Michael Janney from Moncton, Maryland, 
trying to get himself then into what is third position right now. Jakub Maciejewski has found himself a way back through and up the place. So two positions down now for Michael Janney. He's got to really work hard. And they know with the times that they're running, there will be two laps to go in this race. Janney moving back to the outside. Doesn't want to play games here. In fact, he'll try the old late move to the inside of Jakub Maciejewski. He will see it every stage of the way and runs him out of road on the outside. Maciejewski will have to drop the play. And just like that, Josh Thompson now senses an opportunity, but it's not easy to make a move through four into or three into four into five. This is not the easiest place to go and make those moves. So you have to fall into line through this section. Brilliant use of track position there from Michael Janney. He knew exactly where to place the car. Yeah, you can bet that Maciejewski, though, he will not be too happy with that one. He'll feel that he had no option other than to go off the circuit. Didn't get a slowdown or anything for it by the look of it, so he's got away with it. But still, he will feel a little bit hard done by there. And now Josh Thompson wants a piece of this as well. Down in towards turn 10 they go. Sorry, into turn 11. And now throws it up the inside. And Premstad Lemonek says, thank you, I'll have a bit of that as well, Sunshine. But that doesn't quite work out for him. And now he works with his countryman, Maciejewski, to all slide into the slipstream. I think Thompson compromised his run a little bit there because Maciejewski's definitely got a run on him. Although, look at them all moving around this way and that way. It's not too bad to move around. Well, it's only a little jink here and there like that. They're not completely going across Went the circuit. As Maciejewski sends it big time. Josh is going to try and get the cutback I mentioned earlier on. He tries to make sure that Maciejewski doesn't gain anything by going off the circuit. And they remain side by side. And Premslav Lemonek now, he's got a front row seat, Jake. Well, the inside line for Josh Thompson. He can crowd out Maciejewski if he wants to. And you can't turn where you want to, Jakob, can you? And that brings Pajemsua back in. But again, he just doesn't get the drive off the exit because he's so pinched on the inside and Maciejewski holds once again that position. There will be the white flag coming out then here for Harley Horton, who had broken away at the front of the field. Now 2.7 seconds clear at the front of this field. There he is right now, having an absolutely fantastic drive at this moment in time. Comes into today 16 points down and the man from Manchester knows that he has got to look behind and say, I've built a gap over Diogo Pinto and I'll be taking a little bit more out of it. Here comes the look up the hill, two wide, two deep. Thompson makes the move on Maciejewski. Levinette looking behind at Josh Pelain who's suddenly got into play. And now we have ourselves a really cool race on our hands here for fourth on back to seventh position. Well, it's like he's thrown a grenade into the middle of the fight there, though. It's absolutely blown it apart. Look, there's a couple of car lengths between each of them, whereas before they were absolutely nose to tail. But still, the slipstream will be the great leveller in all of this when they get to that back straight. Coming up through turn eight now, they're going to throw the cars to the left. I couldn't quite get the right word out for that one. Over the crest of the hill, down through the kink of 10 into turn 11. And now it is going to be the most important time of this race to get a decent run out of here down towards turn 12. Matt Adams has become the first victim here tonight of the anti-cut curb. So he is out uh. of the race here in the Circuit of the Americas. Taking a look then on board with Josh Thompson, who will be looking behind at Jakub Maciejewski, who's trying to close down and take that fourth position away from the driver third overall in the championship. It is so close, third to fifth. There's just one point in it and every position matters behind Josh Pelain having a little look to the inside. Couldn't quite manage it on Pajem Schwab Lemonek there. So they have to stay in line as they run through this arena section, knowing that this probably, this next left-hander is the last great place to make a move. Thompson has it covered and scouted though through this section of the track. So attentions now have to turn to car number three at the front of this field. Knew that from pole position, the one thing he couldn't do was lose the lead on the opening lap. He didn't and then he did not look back from that point onwards. He is making a claim that this isn't going to be the Diogo Pinto show the same way the Porsche Esports Super Cup was in 2022. Harley Horton takes race one here at Cota and says, I am firmly in the championship bout. I've got to love that. I'm going to try and remain unbiased being from the north of England. I live about 10 minutes outside of Manchester and Harley Horton has done it for the northern boys. Fantastic drive, though. He didn't look back, like you say, Jake. A star performance that was. A lovely, lovely drive indeed. And look at these lot across the line. Fantastic stuff. Great flying formation. Of course, the start line much further back down the start finish straight. Chaz, get it right. But another great race to start our evening. And technically, that rounds out the first half of the season, Jake. Another wonderful, wonderful, entertaining encounter. 
five great races. Harley Horton picks up the win and does so by almost three seconds over the Portuguese driver, Diogo Pinto. Michael Janney would get the final spot on the podium with Josh Thompson fourth and Jakub Maciejewski in fifth. Przemysław Lemonek would finish sixth ahead of Josh Poulain, Brandon Hawkin, Jordan Johnson, and Michael Romanidis then, the Greek driver, rounding out the top 10. Matt Booser and Sebastian Weldon's adventurous race well, it means 11th and 12th for them with Simone Pisoni 13th, Ross Banfield in 14th, and Matt Carano and Johannes Trout, the last finishers. Non-finishes then for anyone called Matt, Matt Adams and Matthew <laughs> Zais finding themselves in a little bit of trouble then here this evening. But we're going to step aside then for just one moment. We'll be back with the second half of the season starting in just a couple minutes. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series in officially licensed cars engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Five races left then to kickstart a racing career. Circuit of the Americas, one race down in the books, one race left to go here tonight. And ultimately, an incredible performance from Harley Horton, who was able to pick up the victory at pretty much a brilliant uh, stroll here this evening. We've got him here right now in with us to have a conversation with. And Harley important race there important first race after what was a bit of damage limitation last time out you have to say coming back here is a massive confidence yeah i know you said it was a bit of a stroll but i can assure you it was more like a, a sprint i'm very sweaty <laughs> in my rig right now um yeah honestly it was uh all about trying to survive the start and then we just put in lap after lap uh really good race so hopefully we can do something similar in the second race so looking to try and break away again is going to be the key but you look at turn number one and the amount of abilities that are there is there something quite frightening about going over to the pit wall and seeing about two-thirds of the grid follow you all the way there or is it just something <laughs> that okay i'm used to it i've done a lot of these races before yeah at first it's a a bit of a scary thought a scary sight but you know, you have to, when you're driving at this level, you just have to turn your emotion. You have to think like a machine. So, you know, after a while you get used to it and it's just, you know, you, you want to be driving like, you know, your inputs want to be pixel perfect. You're not thinking about all that kind of stuff. You've got one driver behind you then in Diogo Pinto, who is the championship leader. Are you looking at someone like Diogo going, well, I know he's quick. He's gained three, qu uh, three places. Do you think that he's going to be your main challenger in this next race? Yeah, Diogo is a very fast driver and a very good racer. So if I can't break away, it's going to be tough to keep them behind. But we'll uh, we'll do our best. Well, we'll do our best. We'll see you do your best. Harley Horton then joining us then a victory in race number one. And Chaz, you know, let's talk about where we have been and where we are going it is three very difficult circuits to end the season out. But you would say it's three circuits which pretty much perfectly encapsulate uh, American racing and sim racing. Circuit of the Americas, the new. Virginia International Raceway, you could say the remodeled. And then Road America, which is a track that's remained unchanged since its inception. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a fantastic mix, though. That's the thing. I mean, Circuit of the Americas really proved to us there 
that all of these different elements that it's got, it's got very quick sweeping corners, it's got very start-stop sections as well, and big tight hairpins and slip streaming opportunities. It's a perfect place to just show all of the elements that these cars have behind them and why they are such good race cars. I'm so excited for Virginia because that is going to be really tough. It's incredibly narrow there. And again, there's a lot of corners that you can only take one line around. But I think, to be honest, my favorite on the calendar is probably going to be Road America because the slip streaming we're going to get there is going to be endless. Again, I come back to the fact that it's not the biggest thing with these cars, the slip stream, yeah. but still, it's a great element to focus on. Harley Horton then, the results of race one determine the grid for race two, will have the pole position ahead of Diogo Pinto with Michael Janney and Josh Thompson third and fourth. It's a Polish third row of the grid, Jakub Maciejewski ahead of Przemysław Lemonek with Josh Poulain and Brandon Hawkin on row four. Jordan Johnson will have Michael Romanidis alongside for company with Matt Busa and Sebastian Weldon then on row six. It's then Simone Pisoni and Ross Banfield 13th and 14th with Matt Carana and Johannes Trout with Matt Adams and Matthew Zace rounding out the eight car field here for this second bout that they will have here today. Those two drop rounds are going to come in handy for a number of drivers and they will also take note of what happened last season over at Virginia International Raceway, Chaz, where the leading two in the championship at that time, Mikel Garda and Elvis Rankin, came together on the final lap. So they'll have that to know that these last five races of the season are anything but plain sailing. Yeah, that's the thing. You don't really want to go into a championship and look at a circuit and say, that one's going to be my drop round or those two are going to be my drop rounds. But I know that a lot of the drivers will be looking at Virginia and thinking the same thing I was mentioning before. It's really, really narrow there. They don't have the sort of playground around them like they do here at Cota. And I'm very, very intrigued by what we're going to see there. But still, they have to set themselves up for a good race here to make sure that this doesn't take up the slot as any of their drop rounds tonight. Only a couple of corners to go. Are we going to see Harley Horton do the same again? Or are we going to see another masterful performance as we'd expect from Diogo Pinto? Then again, you look at the second row of the grid, Michael Janney and Josh Thompson. Flipping neck, if I had that in my rear view mirror, I'd be terrified. I would as well, but Harley Horton and Diogo Pinto, the top two in the championship on the front row of this grid. Right now, they have themselves one and a half seasons worth of the Skip Barber racing series between them in the back pocket. But who's gonna get a full season? Who's going to get a half season? Or will anybody else behind decide that they want to stake a claim here at Circuit of the Americas? Horton will do exactly the same as he did in the race prior. Hold everybody as long as he possibly can for the green flag to drop and then get an absolute launch off of this start. Green flag drops and off goes Harley Horton and in fact he does a lot better than he did in the first race he gets himself a car length and a half climbing up the big red towards turn number two everybody looks to scatter for a line into this opening section it's going to get very dicey a few drivers having to dive out of the way through the early stage to preserve their uh, iRacing Formula IR04s but ultimately everybody gets through now to the S's section side by side Lemonet gets through on Michael Janney who has again gone backwards off of the start I didn't quite catch who it was but I think Matt Adams had a tiny bit of contact with somebody or it might have even been Banfield as well you know just front left wheel to right rear it wasn't very big contact though and they both got away with it although there's a big big wobble there actually by Hawking through turn eight and turn nine he manages to collect that all up but he lost a little bit of momentum there it's very very close in the opening stages once again but you're absolutely right jake fantastic start by harley horton this time the, the first race the whole field all moved at once this time he got a very big jump over diogo pinto lovely little cutback maneuver there going on i believe between lemonek and masievsky Janny in there as well trying to move over to the right hand side and upset any momentum that masievsky has got Fantastic camera here, chasing all the cars down the hill. But for the first time, we're going into turn 12, hard on the brakes. Matt Pusa, Michael Romanidis side by side in the bottom. Just in front of that then was Josh Pellane and Jordan Johnson. Massive lock up there into turn 12. The all-important left-hander. And Matt Pusa getting out of the way. Romanidis will hold on to position just like that. But look at how they dance through this fantastic section. They know that if you can get to the inside here, you've got a really good chance of just boxing out 
anybody there. Josh Pelain is able to manage that. And suddenly Matt Booser again is looking to try and find a way through around the outside. He's not going to get there. And Matt Booser is someone who would have had limited time in terms of getting to practice here for this because he would have been focusing on Inascar, which started off with Daytona a couple nights ago. Yeah, that's it. Some of these drivers are in not just one championship at a top level like this, but they're in multiple, and the cars couldn't be any more different as well. So it really takes a lot of talent to be able to switch from one to the other. Like these guys do look at them moving around down the back. Sorry, the start finish straight there, just in the background, moving all the way over to the left-hand side, I believe. Was that Poulain? I don't think it was. Was it? Oh, that's a big old send up the inside there. And again, just displaying how wide turn one is. People can make these moves, but you lose out on the exit because all you do is compromise yourself, don't you? Well, the basketball team's known as the Dallas Mavericks. Simone Pisoni was the most maverick of them all going <laughs> through up into turn one. How he got that stopped, I do not know. But Matthew, Matt Busa here, pretty much the face of concentration. He's been at sim racing for over a decade, and he is someone who wants to kickstart a career. Look at how it goes through up at the top and he sees behind just how much they are tripping over each other there. Likes of Ross Banfield, Sebastian Weldon, Matt Adams. They're all there. Look at them fanning. They're almost four wide actually as they go into turn 10. This is going to get scary quickly. They all jam on the brakes. Weldon will get ahead of Banfield then with Pisoni, Zace and Johannes Trout all there. This is the back of the field racing for absolutely everything they can scrap and claw for. Yeah, this is fantastic stuff because these guys know that they need to just get away from everyone around them and try and break forward, get involved in some of those battle packs further up the order and get into the slipstream and stay with them. But this is where things, I don't want to say the word desperate, but it does look like it gets a bit desperate because there. every single moment, yeah, there was a bit of contact early on, I think, with Banfield and I think that's a result of that. It was the first corner. I said they had the front left to right rear contact. I think that sort of proves it. But there's another car behind, actually, and that is Personi. Oh, He's got a bit of Johnson. smoke and Johnson's around. Yes, Jordan Johnson then, who goes around then at turn 15. It looks like he's done it all on his own, potentially, there. So he now drops by the entirety of the pack. And that is a huge shame for him. He was looking for a really good run here today around Circuit of the Americas. But as this group stacks, it's eight tenths of a second right now. Harley Horton trying to break away from Diogo Pinto. Took a tenth of a second that last time out. Pinto will feel safe with Josh Thompson behind in third. But you've got Pujem Joab Lemonek behind who while his sim racing results at the highest level haven't been the best his best results so far here Chaz being a 12th place in the force dynamics tomorrow I racing formula championship we've got carnage up at the big red and that looks like a handful of drivers getting caught out Simone Pisoni and Matthew Zace Zace has had another awful race so far but to go back to the point despite the results of Pujem Swab Lemonek not being the best on paper by talent he looks quick he feels quick. It's only a matter of time. Yeah, he's been fantastic, hasn't he? He's been a solid fixture near the top of the championship since the very beginning. He's just not had the breakthrough that some of the other drivers have had at the moment. And he's going to be fed up of being one of the bridesmaids at this point, I think. And this is definitely one of the rounds where he can really break through to the front. But yeah, there was a big old checkup and a bit of carnage there at the back of the field. Banfield, Johnson, Trout. Adams, Zeese and Pisoni is apparently now in the pits and out of the race. We're going to take a look at a replay, Jake, and try and figure out how this all came about. Yeah, and this is up into turn number one. You can see Pisoni. Oh. oh, gets right up onto that rear tyre and he gets that inertia effect up over the top. And that's why the dramas are all there. But let's go back because all of a sudden it's Josh Thompson who's got down the inside of Pisoni's of Lemonet. It looks like Diogo Pinto's lost two places. They were three wide going into turn 12 but on the outside definitely trying to hang it around there is Josh Thompson because he's got the inside for the triple right and Pajemis will have Lemonex not going to want to let this one go quickly he's on the wrong side of the road but he can still have an overlap he's got a chance at the inside oh. turn 19 why don't you cross the beams and go for it around the outside this is incredible stuff by Lemonex but he's still going to try and run out he's still on the wrong side of the road and it opens up Diogo Pinto to the inside a little bit of contact there as uh, now Pinto's going to get himself to the inside and look at that Lemonex Looks like there is nothing wrong at all. This is completely fine. He's on the wrong side of the train, though. And it's allowing the 18 to close on in. Janny Hawking all there behind, trying to get into the mix. Up the hill, seven dancing. Oh, sorry, I correct myself. Six dancing. Try and get through. And look at that, trying to pick a way through. That's Brandon Hawking trying to get 
uh, a look there. Sorry, that's Janny and Maciejewski trying to get a look. Yeah, Maciejewski was very lucky there not to go into the back of Diogo Pinto. Pinto's got away with two very near bits of contact there. In just the last couple of corners, he nearly went into the back of Thompson at turn 20. Then into turn one, he nearly had Maciejewski lifting the back end of the car off the floor. I love the idea, though, of Premslav Lemonek. Nothing wrong at all. We turn around and there's five of the fastest racers we've got in iRacing, all lined up behind him waiting to have a go. And he does not look one bit phased. It might just be the fact that he's that, he's that focused. He's not bothered. Still, epic racing. Great stuff to see Thompson up there in second place. Lemonek third, Pinto, Janny, Maciejewski, and then Hawking. There's only a small gap back to Poulet, Romanidis, and Caruana. And even behind them as well, they've got Matt Booser in tow. This is excellent behavior. I tell you what, Zemislav Lemonek is one of the characters of sim racing, and that's why I love him every time he goes and races. There's a look for second. There's another lot of looks for eight. So to the inside then, covering his left, or oh, outside is Lemonek, inside is just Thompson. He gets through massive contact tire to tire. As they go through, they hold it together. Lemonek's gonna go straight back to the inside. He wants to get aggressive. They make more contact, but Thompson is through, and he gets it through. Diogo Pinto now will sneak on through, but he's not got it secured just yet through this arena section, and he now finally does make the pass. Poulain holds off Caruana. Now Romanidis has dropped to position, but this is excellent stuff right now. They are not afraid here in this second race, knowing they've got nothing left to race for tonight except six minutes and 50 seconds. They're going to get the elbows out. I was worried for a moment there that Lemonet got damaged from that contact. You know, it looked like the car wasn't behaving itself in the following corner. I think he got away with it, maybe just a bit shaken from that contact. You all know how easy it is to just get a bit of red mist and not quite focus on what you're doing. And now, look, team weights outside of the championship working together here. Pinto just pushing Thompson down the start finish straight. He's going to look down the inside. Lemonek fakes to the inside as well. Thompson covers off that inside line. Lemonek round the outside, Whoa. loses the back end slightly, runs wide, and now down the inside. Janny, Maciejewski, they're all going to try and have a go. janny has got through. He's just about going to get rid of the overlap as they go into turn four. Yes, he does. Michael Janney now moves up into fourth position. He's having a good drive once again, is Michael. Car number one, let's not forget, he qualified fastest this week. But look behind them, because here comes Poulain, Caruana, Romanidis, and Booster as well. This is going to become a 10-car train for second place. Well, it means that there's going to be eight people who aren't happy. There's Josh Poulain driving out of Cheltenham, which is not a million miles away from my neck of the woods. He's now going to try and get himself then into position. He's now got to try and look at this and go, what at a time? In fact, why don't you start right now? Straight up the inside of Brandon Hawking, the Canadian. Didn't see that one coming. And thank you very much. He finds himself the move. But does he have drive off of this exit? Because he'll know that Hawking's going to try and get back alongside. The draft's going to be key. And just in front of that as well, Danny and Pinto are deciding to go at it as well. So everywhere you look in this trade, it's going to be busy. Josh Pelay now knows he's going to have to look because they're three wide. Here comes the big send up the inside. Thank you very much, Matt <laughs> Carana has himself a search but look at josh's ability just to hold stage and he shuts the door then on brandon hawking and says thank you that is mine yeah that was lovely composure there by josh poulain he saw the move going on he thought you two just have that battle over there on the inside i'm going to take my own line and i'm going to cut back past the pair of you and i'll have that again lovely camera work here by our guys at the iRacing esports network as well i love seeing the fact that the cars are just going along on minding their own business we turn around and suddenly there's other cars clambering around all over the back of them and it just shows you it's definitely two sides to each story isn't there when we get those camera angles into the final couple of corners we go then and once again we have a massive train of them leading back up the hill four and a half minutes or just under that left to go in this race jake it could all still change yet we've seen it in every round so far this season that it all can explode in the last moments but one thing that's not changed is Harley Horton and a fantastic lead of over four seconds. Matt Caron has been working hard in this race. He is your hardest charger in this field. He started 15th. He is up to eight. That is a gain of seven places so far here in this one. He wants to make it a whole heap more if he can. So he will have the high charger award at the end of this race, providing that he doesn't fall into the folly of making mistakes. But as they rush through now up the hill, this is a brilliant section, turns eight and nine. Up the hill at nine, you are waiting for the power, but it's so easy to run wide as demonstrated just there by Josh Poulet. Yeah, it really is because you're going over the crest and you can't quite see where the curb ends and where it finally straightens up. And the thing is as well, it's not quite like turns three, four, five, and six before it where you just flat out and you can just sort of 
gently grace the car through. You really have to be focused on just snapping onto the brakes a little bit just to get that extra rotation, really throw the car in and manage the weight transfer one way, then the other. But look at this train of cars. It's excellent to see, but Horton's gone up the road. Pinto now is almost acting like a rear tail gunner for Josh Thompson. He's got the championship lead coming into tonight, and he knows probably if he can hold on to third place and help his teammate out in the process, he could definitely hold the championship lead here. So this is excellent stuff. But Michael Janney is the first car behind them to have a go. It is, well, it's so, so close, Jake, but this is the sort of racing we love, isn't it? We do, and if you love it, you can sign up yourself and join in heading over to skipbarber.com forward slash iRacing series to become a member here of the Skip Barber Formula iRacing series now flying around through the penultimate corner, turn 19, leading to turn number 20 out on track. They will have two laps to go to figure this out between them at this stage. And you can join us and start your very own iRacing career today by logging on to iRacing.com. Brand new members get 40% off of their first membership as you get and go. Look to the outside then from Michael Janney. Won't be able to get that done at the big red there with Diogo Pinto, who saw that one every single stage of the way. You've got Pajem Schwab Lemonek there. You've got Maciejewski, Josh Pelé, Matt Caruana, Brandon Hawking, Michael Romanidis, and Matt Busa. All there, all thinking about when is the right time to strike in this train. Expect two wide, expect three wide, but they're all gearing it up through this section of track try and get a move done and it is so vital that they maximize these next three corners which is the biggest one Josh Thompson taking a massive chunk of the grass out there through turn number nine Lemonek was taking really wide lines as well trying to set this up but all of it didn't really amount to much here as he gets into turn 11 big send up the inside from Poulain as well on Masiewski they're side by side on the exit of the corner as well I think the pair of them might have actually outdone Lemonek as well have they no they have not I apologize it was the other blue car of Caruana just behind they are glued to each other Caruana pushing Poulain now down this back straight the car wiggling around under the pressure very scary moment for Josh doesn't look like it when you look at his face though he looks calm as a cucumber doesn't he but right now hang on the phrase is cool as a cucumber ahead of them Janney having a go at Pinto and look at this Masiewski once again off the road but great respect by Josh gives him the room to get back on he doesn't keep him out there and Masiewski gets the place done Janney ahead of Pinto further ahead though and there's going to be one more lap to go after this Jake I never want it to end no I don't either I give him an extra hour they could race forever <laughs> at this point but still Diogo Pinto holds with some brilliant defense. Janny is throwing the kitchen sink at the Portuguese driver, but cannot find a way to unlock it. Michael Janney last season was fifth in this championship. He wants to do better than that, and he wants to throw everything he can to get up onto that podium to stop Diogo Pinto's momentum, to keep himself in championship contention. You would have thought that is the gap at the front of the field. They are specs in the distance right now for Harley Horton. We have hardly shown him all race long, and the reason why is because it's the greatest compliment you can have as a driver to not be seen at the front of the field. You're doing too good the actions elsewhere. No news is good news, as they say. And full disclosure, I love the fact that our director said, meanwhile, when he switched to that shot of Harley Horton, one of the funniest things I've witnessed. But still, he's absolutely gone, and there's, well, the only reason for that is his composure and his pace. These guys battling as well, though, might have something to do with it, to be honest, as Chaz basically contradicts himself. But what entertainment these guys have given us, Jake. This has been an amazing race, especially the dynamics here of Thompson and Pinto, teammates outside of this championship, working together to hold this pack up, essentially, and just make it work how they want it to work. Josh has got great pace. Pinto has got incredible defensive ability, and even somebody like Michael Janney has not been able to find a chink in the armour yet. A couple of corners left to go, about half a lap. Let's see what he can do. Well, nobody decided to make a move, and that is crucial. So now Michael Janney looks to close on in. We'll look from the back of the man from Ramsey, the Isle of Man, Josh Thompson, who will now see to the inside goes Diogo Pinto, who might have to attack here to make the move happen. Janney then is going to go to the outside, try and make it happen. They box him. They completely box him in, and they might decide to race too wide. Here comes Diogo Pinto to the outside, trying to make the move happen. Josh Thompson's going to have to look around him every which way because Diogo might search for the inside here, and he's got the angle to to go. Look at him behind. Oh, my goodness. There's almost massive carnage they go through. Lemonek is shoved out about three leagues 
over to the right, still side by side to the triple right. While this happens, Harley Horton is going to take the double here at Circuit of the Americas. He'll come to life. But look at this. This is for six. And it's off the third. It's three wide per second. It's three wide per second as they come to lines of victory there as they go through. Who's got it then through second position? It's Josh Thompson and Michael Janney will take third. Pinto fourth, Maciejewski fifth, and about five cars trying to finish it out for 10th place. Oh my goodness me. You needed about 80 different eyes and 3,000 different cameras to show just how brilliant that second race was. How all of those guys in that second pack made the end of that race there, I do not know. Matt Caruana got smashed into by the number 17 machine of Josh Poulain, and somehow Josh made it through, but I think he might have been penalised or something for that because he suddenly dropped to the bottom of our timing screen here. I'm not quite sure how quickly that was applied. Yeah, he must have done because he went flying off the road, but somehow still made the end of the race. It was incredible entertainment, but boy, oh boy, they certainly showed us they wanted that. But well done again, Harley Horton. What a drive. Yep, 6.7 seconds at the end of the day is the victory margin ahead of Josh Thompson and Michael Janney in third. Diogo Pinto will take fourth ahead of the two Polish drivers, Jakub Maciejewski and Przemysław Lemonek. Matt Caruana would take high charge and finish off in seventh ahead of Michael Romanidis in eighth and Brandon Hawking in ninth. It would be Matt Busa who would round out the top 10. Jordan Johnson would finish 11th ahead of Sebastian Weldon in 12th position with Ross Banfield 13th and Matt Adams in 14th ahead of Matthew Zace and Johannes Trout 15th and 16th. It would have been a slowdown penalty which was unable to be served before reaching the line. That would have been what cost Josh Poulain all those positions. So he gets his number in the hot lap qualifying. He gets 17th. And we saw the dramas of Simone Pistoni doing his best reenaction of 2002 Rubens Barrichello at the Australian Grand Prix. His race over and done with. But one thing we can say is that Harley Horton does have himself a victory. And he's here with us right now at the double, Harley. That is what we call an even better result than the first race. You broke a second once again. And then once more, you just watched as Josh and Diogo decided, you know what? We're going to hold the rest of the pack up. You're gone. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought they would uh, try and chase me down. And at one point, they were closing in on me just a tiny bit. And then, uh, yeah, all of a sudden, I look in my relative and they're all within like three tens of each other battling. So at that point, I knew I just had to keep it, keep it steady, keep it consistent and uh, everything would be all right. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a bigger gap than the last race, but it's still still not any easier. It's uh extremely hard to run that pace for even 15 minutes it's extremely difficult to run a, a very tough pace especially in a very tough race like this but when you look to try and bring all the elements together just talk us through your week in terms of getting ready for this race going through the hot laps all of the time that you spend with the setup trying to get the car working as much as possible to your driving style what do you go through as a process of a sim racing driver to try and be as fast as possible come tonight? Well, obviously, first you've got to go through the hot lap qualifier and that's uh, a whole beast in itself. That's just trying to uh, string as many, you know, perfect corners together and try and get the lap in. But then once you think you've got a lap that's going to get you in, you have to move on to some sort of quality prep, race prep, you know, it's... Um, it's really tricky to drive these cars consistently and especially here without any sliding at the rear which just kills your momentum so very tough car to master um but yeah prep is all about being consistent that that's uh what wins your races well the next two races happen in a week from now you're heading to the virginia international raceway how do you prepare for that track? It's not a track which everybody's running eye racing, but at least for you, uh, you have the understanding of it's very similar to this Cota circuit by makeup and composition. Yeah, it's got a few nice uh, elevation changes, a bit more of a fun track than this one, but very similar, lots of high speed stuff, heavy braking. So it's another tough track to master. Cota is very technical and so is uh, so is VIR. So it is going to be about that consistency and just trying to get everything right lap after lap. Well, hopefully we will see that happen for you. Harley Horton then a double victory, a third race win of the season and absolutely storming back 
towards the top of the championship tables. Chaz, you've taken a walk down virtual pit lane and you've found your way to Michael Janney. I have indeed, Michael. I mean, you worked very, very hard for that podium there, mate. There was certainly a lot of times where you had to try and have a dig at Diogo and Josh. And of course, with those two being teammates outside of this championship, did you expect that they'd work together like that? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I went for an attempted overtake, I think, in a turn 13 on probably lap four or five. And then I realized Josh is backing it up. So I'm like, oh, man, uh, I'm really going to have to work for this. Um, and yeah, I mean, that that last lap was insane. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't even plan it out. It just kind of worked out. Um, and I knew that I had to do something. So even though I was danger close to his uh, left tires, I was just going to keep my foot in it and uh, try my best to get that podium. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you, you say there, you know, you, you had to plan it out a little bit and just try and make it work. But in a lot of the situations when the racing is so close like this, does all of that go out of the window most of the time, do you find? Or do, does a lot of it go to plan? Um, It, it kind of depends on how you're racing, to be honest. Um, yeah. And also, like, where you are in the race, right? Because, like, lap one, two, the guys are probably going to go for sense. And then in the middle, they'll kind of calm down a bit. Mm. Um, but, yeah, with the long braking zones here, it's... Uh, you never know, really. Um, I mean, three or four times tonight, I was sent, and the only reason I saw it is just because, you know, peripheral in the mirror. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's really insane. Um, I'm I'm really impressed. Um, last year the racecraft was good in the series, but I think this year it's at another level. Um, just how close we can get to these guys, and there's no major issues up front is is really cool. It's nice as well. I mean, this is. Absolute so much fun. It's like a go-kart race, literally. It's very fun. <laughs> I mean, from where we are as well, it's absolutely some of the best racing I've ever seen on the service. You know, these cars really do sort of hand themselves to it, and I love, love watching it. Um, I mean, we've got two fantastic racetracks lined up for the rest of the season, Virginia and then Road America. Are you excited for those two as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, those are repeats, so, uh, you know, I know what I did last year, and I uh, want to improve on both those results, so I uh, definitely look forward to them. Well, we certainly hope it goes well for you, Michael. Thanks for joining us, mate, and well done on tonight. Great. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Very composed well, and uh, well-spoken Michael Jenny there. Certainly enjoyed himself. And it's it's great to see that the drivers are enjoying it as well, isn't it, Jake? It really is. Absolutely. And Diogo Pinto, I think, is one of those said drivers. Diogo, second in race one, fourth in race two. Um, let's talk about race one first and foremost, because you had to work those three places up and forward and I think was a lot more simpler of a race to deal with. Uh, yeah, race two was, well, race one. Race one was pretty straightforward. I got up to P2. I didn't have the place to catch Charlie and yeah, I got a bit lucky at the end. I got the gap behind, so wasn't, wasn't much going on there. The second race, I was just working with Josh so he could do P2, P3. I wanted to pass him on the last lap. I had a bad run up to the back straight, so I couldn't quite get the position. So, yeah, a bit unlucky getting fourth instead of at least a third or a second place. But let's see. Still some OK points and two rounds to go. When you have a wingman like Josh Tom, someone who has been in sim racing for a number of years, has understood sim racing at the highest level with a number of great and capable teams, just how crucial is that sort of experience brought to you as a driver? Well, uh we were just working as teammates for the second race, so there's not, not much else to say. Um, I was trying to defend him a bit, and then on the last lap, I was I, I wanted to overtake him, but like I said, I couldn't really get the move done. I had a bad exit, because I have a bit of more of an aggressive line that doesn't work as well following someone, because I need to get entered the corner faster than the guy ahead of me, so it doesn't really work when I have someone blocking me in front, which really compromised my exit, and that was that. Then... Jane could uh, could get the move done, and they got first. Virginia International Raceway then, which is one week from today. You still go in with a margin at the front, but you look at the two results that Harley have had today. Do you think that this is by no means, firstly, one, a settled championship, and two, each week seemingly someone else has got the magic formula? Well, we'll see. I mean, in the second race as well, I got uh, there was a situation there with the start. We were supposed to go on green, and Ali went a little bit before green, which helped me get help him get a gap towards me and break the draft. So that's going to be up to race control. We we're supposed to go on green, and 
that was not the case on the second race, so we'll see what they decide. Uh, but yeah, for sure, two, there's still two rounds to go. Um, I think I have a, quite a big gap in the overall championship, but then there's two drop rounds, so it evens things up a bit. So let's see. Let's see indeed. Diogo Pinto there joining us with uh, a podium and a fourth place out of the two races here tonight. And Chaz, very quickly, you found yourself over with Josh Thompson. Yes, indeed, Josh. A very, very busy night for you guys. Plenty going on near the front, but finally you've got that podium that you've been threatening to get since the very start. You must be relieved as well as very happy with it. Yeah, like like you said, to get, to finally get another podium, especially after Atlanta. We started off the season a bit slow, but being just slow, with my, like, way, like making my way through the field, getting up to a podium has been consistent over the championship. And that's the main thing. Especially this point system, it's got to be super consistent. At the moment, I've not like Touchwood had actually a really bad score yet, so it's got to keep building on that. And hopefully, by the end of the season, we get a win. That's the aim. That's all game at the moment. Well, we hope that that happens for you, Josh, and obviously on a personal level as well. I've seen you come through the ranks <laughs> for so long now. It's uh, it's good to see it going well. Um, one final quick question though, because we do have to move things on. I'm afraid, but. The two circuits remaining on the calendar, are you excited about them? Are you sort of apprehensive about them? What do you think? VIR, yes. Road American, no. Um, regardless of the track, I think me and Durga both know we've got a bit of work to do. With Harley's pace tonight, it was kind of ridiculous. Like we, He just <laughs> left everyone standing still. So, Man, yeah, we've go, yeah, we've got to go full attack. So let's see. Any track can like, throw up a surprise. Absolutely. Well... Very well done either way, Josh. Great to see that podium tonight, mate. Well done, and we will yeah, see guys. you in a week's time. Cheers. Cheers. Well, there you have it there. Josh Thompson, who is there joining us and bringing us through with some incredible action. But we head to the brand new remodeled Virginia International Raceway here on iRacing February 23rd. 8 p.m. Eastern is when it's going to be taking place. And Chaz, you look at this track. It has all of the hallmarks of some great corners and last season, we saw it all effectively come to a bulkhead here. This championship is looking so similar, it is scary. Oh, absolutely. It is by no means over yet. And this is an absolute classic of a racetrack that we're going to be going to. It's got very twisty sections. It's got start-stop sections, massive undulation, and all of it takes place on a really narrow circuit, an old-school circuit with loads of grass around it that gives you absolutely no margin for error. I am really hyped about Virginia. I'm hyped as well, and you can catch that with us of course with iRacing what an incredible showcase we've had here once again but it is at the double for the second consecutive week but this time it's Harley Horton Horton here's a who nobody he's that far ahead of the rest of the field we'll catch you one week from today we will move over to VIR where the seventh and eighth races take place <laughs> 